Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, the content that we're going to talk about tonight is I actually watched Biden's speech, recorded it, cut it up into nice little digestible segments, and I'm going to show you how we're going to refute it and turn it around and send it out in the right direction. Now, this is really important because when Biden was speaking tonight, he was speaking for 17 minutes and 12 seconds, roughly. This thing could have been written by Mom's Demand Action sitting down for coffee and tea with every town for gun safety. This was every talking point that they use. Now, the good news is it was every talking point that they use. So we're going to refute the entire thing right here. Send this video out. We need as many people as we can to get into the, into the ranks here. So make sure if you're not subscribed, you are. Turn that bell on so we can send out a lot of information because the fight is real right now. And we need you guys with us. I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor, SDI, and then I'm going to show you how to refute Biden step by step, day by day, because it made it pretty straightforward. Now, I know a lot of you out there are like to repair and upgrade your own guns. If you're looking for a way to take your hobby to the next level, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. The online programs at STI cover armor courses, gunsmithing, ballistics, woodworking finishes, shooting sports management, and more. Plus, tools and materials are shipped directly to your door for hands-on practice. It's never been a better time to actually get some education you can use on the job. So what are you waiting for? There's a link in the description box below. And thank you so much for checking them out. And thank you to SCI for making this rebuttal tonight possible. All right, so we're going to go everywhere here, guys. Everything is linked in the description box below. I always bring the receipts, including some stuff from the Heller decision because Biden... My boy Biden here brings in Antonin Scalia, which they like to do, which was a bit of a problem in the points he's about to say. All right, enough of the setup. Let's get into this. I got a couple clips. This is this should help you guys. Check this out, because according to Biden, this is not about taking our guns. If you at home, I want to be very clear. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vil not about vilifying gun on gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. Uh, guys, just a quick question. A little Freudian slip there about not vilifying, but vilifying. But do you feel respected as a responsible gun owner? Just, just out of curiosity. You guys, by the way, open comments in the comments field down there. But there's not a whole lot of respect coming for everyone who's not breaking the law or doing egregious activities with their rights. Just saying. But let's keep going. I had to set that up. Prime the pump. But this is where they go into Justice Scalia, Antonin Scalia. They always do this on the left. They're like, see, even a gun-favoring justice of the Supreme Court said there was limitations on gun rights. Check out what he says, then I'm going to show you some stuff from the Heller decision. At the same time, the Second Amendment, like all other rights, is not absolute. It was, just, it was Justice Scalia who wrote, and I quote, like most rights, the right Second Amendment, by the, the rights granted by the Second Amendment, are not unlimited, not unlimited, and never has been. There have always been limitations on what weapons you can own in America. For example, machine guns have been federally regulated for nearly 90 years, and this is still a free country. All right, so Bobo stepped in it right there because now what I'm going to show you is some actual documentation from the Heller decision, which was written by Antonin Scalia. By the way, every other time they hate Antonin Scalia because he, he uh, codified and he supported Second Amendment rights in the Heller decision. But there's also the Miller decision. Check this out. Everything is linked. Let's get it. United States v. Miller, 307 U.S. 174, does not limit the right to keep and bear arms to militia purposes but rather limits the type of weapon to which the right applies to those used by, by the militia, i.e. those in common use for lawful purpose. Common use. Now, Biden's trying to say there's limitations, so we shouldn't have AR-15s, we shouldn't have these rights. It's in common use. It's the most common sporting rifle in America. Now, let's show you, I'm going to show you something else from the Heller decision, who is referencing the Miller decision. Really important. Thanks, Biden, bring this up. Miller's holding that the sorts of weapons protected are those, quote, in common use at the time, finds support in the historical tradition of prohibiting the carrying of dangerous and unusual weapons. And that's what Biden is referencing to when he always says, uh, you can't buy cannons. You even outlawed machine guns for so many years, for 90 years in the NFA, which, by the way, came out of prohibition. Prohibition goes away. Gun rights are still, I'm just saying. But my point is, Biden brings up Antonin Scalia like he's the great sage, but then he doesn't use the other things that codify and support the points of having the weapon of an AR-15. 
or the ability to have one or an AK-47. All of these things they're talking about, they give you snippets and they give you itty bitty pieces. It's irritating, but that's a good point. So here's another thing, and he mentioned trigger locks in this. I'm not going to play the clip, but here's another thing that Antonin Scalia said. Similarly, the requirement that any lawful firearm in the home be disassembled or bound by a trigger lock makes it impossible for citizens to use arms for the core lawful purpose of self-defense, and it is hence unconstitutional. So there you go, sitting President of the United States advocating for unconstitutional activities, but we're just getting started. Now, I've got a video linked in the description box below. We're going to walk through a CDC kid study that Biden would like to use, again, from gun controllers and a misrepresentation. But don't worry. According to new data just released by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, guns are the number one killer of children in the United States of America. The number one killer. More than car accidents. More than cancer. Over the last two decades, more school-age children have died from guns than on-duty police officers and active-duty military combined. Think about that. All right, so now I'm going to point you to the video that is linked in the description box below where I cover this exact same CDC study. What Biden and that CDC and study and the gun controllers are not going to tell you is everything in that study covers from zero all the way up to about 21 years of age. That's what they're calling kids. And interestingly enough, in that CDC study, it shows that a majority of the homicides came from the 18 to the 21-year-old demographic. But that's what makes kids suffering from gunshots more than from cars because they're including 18 to 21 year old homicide suspects it's linked down there if you want to see it but let's keep going because now i've got to show you some senate trickery because he's starting to do some politic in here but he's not going to get away with it so listen to what he says about the senate and specifically the filibuster it's time for the senate to do something but as we know in order to do any get anything done in the senate we need a minimum of 10 Republican senators. I support the bipartisan efforts that include small group of Democrats and Republican senators trying to find a way. But my God, the fact that the majority of the Senate Republicans don't want any of these proposals even to be debated or come up for a vote. It's unconscionable is what he says there. But what's interesting is he's playing a political game with the Senate around the filibuster. He knows for a fact that a lot of Americans don't understand that if you go past the filibuster with 60 votes and you go into a debate stand status, the how the leader of or the uh, the leader of the Senate, in this case Chuck Schumer, can simply call a cloture vote, make the vote happen. It now gets through with 50, and then the vice president Kamala Harris makes it law. But he doesn't say that. He puts it on. They don't even want to talk about it because he knows that if it gets past that filibuster, it becomes law but they won't tell anybody that, and that's important information for you guys to know. And the last thing I'm going to show you, really bring it in home, there's only one group of people that I've ever met in my adult life that decry tragedy, but then try to benefit from it. Allow me to show you exactly what I'm talking about, because it turns out this is a really good opportunity to garner votes. I know how hard it is, but I'll never give up. And if Congress fails... I believe this time a majority of the American people won't give up either. I believe the majority of you will act to turn your outrage into making this issue central to your vote. Enough, enough, enough. So who, who again is benefiting? So the big thing that I'm going to bring you here is we don't want to focus on any of the things that we're talking about. We don't want to talk about actual facts, statistics, nothing. We want to talk about what Biden brought up, even though it was pretty much written by Every Town for Gun Safety and Moms Demand Action. I'm not saying they actually wrote it, but those are all the points we've been fighting on this channel for over a year now. So we were ready in a sense. And at the very end, make sure you remember to vote against gun, or for gun control and against Republicans. Don't focus on the economy, the inflation, the build back better, the foreign war. Don't And none of those things. Make sure you vote for us on this issue, but make sure no one takes advantage of the tragedy that's going on. And that's what I've got for you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, and I will see you tomorrow morning on The Bullet Points. I'm Braden. See you later.